In this video we'll talk about gradual adaptation methods for polyphasic sleep, which are by far the most successful methods to adapt to a polyphasic schedule. I've seen many people try these methods on the Discord and hope to share my knowledge on them with you so you don't make any mistakes. We'll go over four gradual adaptation methods in this video and discuss what effect they will have on your success rate. Hello everybody and welcome back to the channel. My name is Crimson Flower. I'm a main author of Polyphasic.net, the community recommended resource for polyphasic sleepers. I'm also the server owner on the Polyphasic Discord and I'm a moderator on other subreddit r slash polyphasic. Today we will continue the mini-series on adaptation methods to polyphasic schedules. And if you haven't seen the first video in the playlist, I highly encourage you to do so. And if you enjoy this content, be sure to like this video and hit the subscribe and bell icon so you don't miss out on any polyphasic sleep related updates in the future to ensure that you successfully adapt to a polyphasic schedule. So let's talk about the different gradual adaptation methods. And what do we mean by gradual adaptation methods? Basically. Any method that builds on a previous schedule and evolves into something else would be a gradual adaptation method. I'll show you some examples to describe this in a bit when we talk about the specific gradual adaptation methods. But let's start by listing off which ones we have. We have gradual adaptation, fast gradual adaptation, reverse gradual adaptation and rhythmic preservation. Regular gradual adaptation refers to switching schedules to one with a lower total amount of sleep while keeping some of the naps and cores in place. The idea here is to start with an easy schedule, then move to harder ones by cutting down the total amount of sleep each adaptation. This process takes a very long time to complete with each step taking at least a month, but it's much easier to do than the cold turkey method. By cutting down the overall sleep time in small chunks, it's much easier for the body to adapt to it because there's not as much sleep that needs to be repartitioned each step. And the sleep deprivation levels will thus not become as intolerable as with the method compared to jumping straight to the schedule with the cold turkey one. Another benefit is that REM in the established naps carry over from one schedule to the other and it's much easier to have every nap in the schedule quickly be filled with REM sleep. It's best to follow the schedule line while doing this and to have as many naps and cores lined up with each other between switches. When going for gradual adaptation method, you want to keep as many traits as possible from one jump to the next. Examples here would be sleep time, wake time, nap times, core splits and so on. This becomes more apparent in just a moment, but let's now exemplify different adaptation routes with the gradual adaptation method. We have monophasic sleep to every man 1, to every man 2, and every man 3. As you can see, the naps are kept in place, and each iteration, one cycle is cut off the core with the addition of another nap. Then there's monophasic sleep to segmented to dual core 1. Here, the first step is to split the core into two parts, and after that's done, the second core is shortened by one cycle with the addition of a nap. This way, the body first learns to split the sleep stages in each core and then just serves on that ability to shorten sleep time even further. The next one we'll talk about is monophasic sleep to draw core 1 extended to draw core 2. Similar how we did in the previous example, the idea is first to have the body split the core sleep. Uh, however, in this case we go straight into adding a nap and thus completing the process of learning how to split sleep and learning how to nap in a pretty easy adaptation. After this is done, the second core is shortened by one cycle with the addition of another nap and the result is dual core 2. This one is pretty cool. Monophasic sleep to segmented to triphasic. The schedule makes perfect use of keeping traits. As you can see, the first segmented core's sleep time is kept and the second segmented core's wake time is kept. Overall, it's a pretty neat gradual adaptation path. And finally, we have another cool one. Monophasic sleep to segmented to tricore 1 to dual core 3. This gradual adaptation path relies heavily on keeping sleep times and wake times, as well as previous placements of nap times. Uh, in the first step, the core is split, then it's split again to establish a mixed core and nap, and finally, the REM core of tricore 1 is split in order to become two naps, completing the path to dual core 3. It's important to note that some people consider this method as harder than a cold turkey adaptation. 
While the sleep deprivation is milder than our other schedules, the total time spent in a sleep deprived state is longer, which can make the exact schedules harder to maintain. But let's talk about the next adaptation method, the fast gradual adaptation. As the name implies, this adaptation method is like the gradual adaptation, but instead of waiting for the sleep deprivation to be recovered between adaptations, you switch schedules after the necessary skills have been acquired. An example of this would be like adapting to triphasic from segmented and switching schedules at around stage 2 to 3 when the body has learned to separate the pores, uh, instead of needing to do that at the same time as learning to separate the SWS core uh, during the triphasic adaptation. This method is very hard to pull off by inexperienced people and should be avoided by those. To clarify, switching schedules mid-adaptation will reset the adaptation time, uh, but keep the sleep deprivation levels, which means that the stages 1 and 2 are going to be shorter and the third stage is going to be longer, as a trade-off, as described in the previous video uh, on exaptations. I don't want to dwell on this too long, so let's look at the next one, the reverse gradual adaptation. This one is pretty wacky. So the idea with this one is to switch from an already adapted schedule to a schedule with more sleep time. For example from an adapted Everyman 3 to Everyman 2. Um, this will not take as long as the original adaptation from schedule X to Everyman 3 by the way. Now, reverse gradual adaptations are useful for people whose schedule changes after a successful adaptation, forcing them to completely switch schedules instead of being able to flex. Sticking with the schedule line is wise, uh, as switching from schedule lines would still require an adaptation to occur. Uh, like for example switching from the Everyman line to the dual core line. So just to emphasize, the following paths are okay. Everyman 3 to Everyman 2 to Everyman 1, Dual Core 1 to Segmented, and Dual Core 3 to Tri-Core 1 to Dual Core 1 Extended, and so on, you get the point. But there's something important I want to tell you. Some people use this method in an attempt to save an adaptation after realizing they can't handle the initial amount of sleep deprivation, or after a big oversleep. This often results in failure to adapt for several reasons. One, their naps can stop working temporarily, which wears them out. Two, the initial amount of sleep deprivation turned out to be too much to handle even after the switch. Three, tiredness strikes at the old sleep times. Four, the body starts treating the new schedule as continuously oversleeping, which leads to major tiredness, bumps, headaches and so on. And five, a lack of will and discipline and so on. All of these cases will lead to a perpetual loop of oversleeping, which ruins their adaptations and forces them to quit. Let's now talk about the last gradual adaptation method called Rhythmic Preservation. This is a hypothetical method based on the gradual reduction in sleep time theory, with which it might be easier to switch to a reduced sleep schedule while maintaining schedule rhythm. Uh, essentially, you shorten a core to, of an adapted schedule and turn it into a nap. Examples of this include bimaction to trimaction to dimaction, dual core 4 to everyman 5 to uberman, and tricore 2 to dual core 3. All of these sleep groups keep the same number of sleep blocks and preserve sleep times. Uh, some prefer to keep the beginning sleep time uh, consistent, while others prefer to keep the wake time at the end of a sleep block consistent. Unlike general gradual adaptation, in rhythmic preservation one core cycle at a time is replaced with one nap, and the rest of the sleep times are kept the same. Uh, the key here is that when one sleep block is replaced with a nap, the body should remember when to feel tired. Uh, repartitioning still has to kick in though, uh, so light sleep is going to need to be reduced from schedules regardless of the switch. In other words, the rhythmic preservation only reasons the ease with which you fall asleep or wake without oversleeping uh, due to keeping uh, the circadian entrainment. Unfortunately, there's not a lot of data on these methods and the sample sizes are pretty small. Uh, the only one of these methods that had some statistics in the 2018 polyphasic survey was the gradual adaptation method with a 100% success rate where 7 out of 7 attempted people adapted to the schedules. Um, as you can see in this picture, none of the other methods had any attemptees. 
so we'll have to wait, wait until the 2019 polyphasic survey to hopefully gather some data on them. Okay, that's all for today's video. Did you find any of these gradual adaptation methods interesting? Which ones? Uh, what's your opinion? Do you think the trade-off of the intensity of sleep deprivation against the time spent in adaptation is worth it? Please share your thoughts below uh, in the comments. Anyways, I'll be seeing you in the next video. Pleasant naps, people! Hey, I'm Akahana, an editor on this channel. If this video matters to you, click the subscribe button and the bell icon to get the latest info on mastering your sleep. We want to help you work towards the life you want on your terms and in your time. Please consider donating via Ask Your Ko-fi page as this helps sustain website costs and data gathering efforts across our communities. If you have any questions, check the links below and contact us directly. Thank you.